Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at how to host a podcast on Azure Blob Storage. Today I wanted to revisit blob storage because in the past we've looked at blob storage before and all of its features and we did a bunch of videos talking about what we could do with it. I want to revisit blob storage today to talk about a project I had been recently working on for developing and deploying a podcast to blob storage. So blob storage can host static websites. So it makes it ideal for hosting content like MP3 files, but I also wanted to write an application that could also be hosted on blob storage that would manage a podcast as well. So what I did is I ended up writing a little application that used the APIs on top of blob storage that would allow me to create some things like RSS feeds and then also upload files and things like that through the application and interact exclusively with blob storage on Azure. So to review, Azure blob storage is simply a way of storing all kinds of data in Azure. It doesn't really have a structure to it. It's just binary data or text data, whatever it might be. And you're basically just storing files up on Azure Blob Storage in a way that allows you to share those files with applications or others through shared assets tokens or through URLs or even through a static website, which we'll be looking at today. And it's very easy to use. Uh, blob Storage, it really doesn't take much to get your head around it and you can spin it up quickly and start deploying stuff to it. Uh, quickly and there's a whole suite of tools around blob storage that make this process easy there's az copy there's the azure portal there is storage explorer and there's a number of other you know, third-party tools and sdks that all work with blob storage so it can be sliced and diced and used in a variety of different contexts depending on what your use case might be and what we're going to be looking at today is looking at metadata in particular with blob storage and we're going to be revisiting how you can host a static website on blob storage as well and with the metadata what you can basically do is just create key value pairs that you can associate with any blob or any file that you put on blob storage and that you have a key that has uh, some value and then a, a value that goes with that key and then you can use that as a way to describe the blobs or the containers on azure blob storage I'm here in the Azure portal and I'm going to create a storage account, which is actually really easy to do. I'm going to come over here, collect, select storage account, and I'm going to create a new resource. I'm going to call it Blobcast since that's the name of my little app that I'm going to be installing or Blobcaster. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Blobcaster is the name of my storage account. I don't really care what region it's in. They pretty much will all work. I want to use standard. I want to make sure it's V2 general purpose, not one of these other ones. And I'm going to go through the networking. I want public endpoints because I'm going to be hosting this on the internet. Um, uh, I don't want to, I'm going to disable this because I'm going to have a uh, ability to have a custom domain with this if I wanted to. And I, if I didn't want to use a custom domain, I would encourage you keeping that on. And the rest of that I can just leave as the default. I don't need tags. And I'm going to review and create this guy. And this will take just a few seconds to validate. And then once it validates, it only takes a few seconds for it to actually create the storage account. And let's get that creation underway and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, now that my resource is deployed, I'm gonna to go to my resource. And inside of this resource, I'm gonna set it up to host my application. And this doesn't take really that long to do. First thing I need to do is come down here and turn on the static website. And that's simply just turning on the enable I'm going to put an index.html for my index.document and I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to take this endpoint right here and I'm going to copy it, everything but the, the trailing slash and I'm going to come over here to cores. And the reason I'm going to do this is so that I can actually interact with the APIs for this particular storage account through an application. So to do that, I simply just plug in this your this uh, URL this HTTPS URL. I'm going to turn in turn on all the methods, and I'm going to allow headers of all types to be exposed as well as allowed. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing since I am setting it up for HTTP as well. Uh, I'm going to select 
these uh, and all these methods and then allow for these headers and these exposed headers as well. So let's go ahead and click save. And now I have my cores rules enabled and I have my static website set up and ready to go. So now all I really need to do is and upload some files and we'll be good to go. I have my cores set up and now I'm gonna go over to GitHub and get the code that I want to install on this. I really am just gonna install two files, this file and this file right here. So I'm gonna just clone this repo right here and download it as a zip and uh, I've already actually downloaded it. And I can go show folder location and there is the zip file. I'm gonna find a new folder out here and I'm gonna call it, um, let's just call it Blobcaster. And I'm gonna drop this zip file here and I'm gonna extract those files simply uh, to this folder right here. I don't need the rest of it. That's just the readme and the images that are embedded in the readme. So I really just wanna upload these two files to my storage account. So back over here on my storage account, I can come over here to containers and I can then look at this container that which was created whenever I turned on static website. So I'm gonna open this guy up, click upload, and I'm going to find a file, find those files that I just extracted right there in Blobcaster. And I'm just going to select those and upload it. One of these is the actual program I wrote, which is the admin.html, which has a bunch of JavaScript, CSS, and HTML embedded in it in a single file. And then this is a library from, from available on GitHub from the Azure storage team that has the SDK for developing browsers inside of a browser that use a blob storage. So you don't have to go through something like a Azure function or some other way of interacting with that. You can interact with it directly within the context of a browser. So now that I have that uploaded, now I need to go and get some SAS tokens. So to do that, I can go back to my storage account over here and um, go to this link here, shared access token, and I'm going to get one for blobs. And those are the uh, service types I need, service container and object, uh, all the permissions. I'm gonna set it for some arbitrary date in the distant future, say next year, the same date, and generate the SAS token. And I'm gonna, then I can copy this down to somewhere uh, and paste it into a folder. But let's go ahead and do that, or I can just leave this open for now. Um, and let's go to my static website right here and uh, get the URL that I want. And my static URL will give me the URL for this particular blob storage account that I can use to access the application, which I'll need to log in with in order to, uh, I'll need that Blobcaster account name as well as the name as the, the shared access token I just created. So I'm gonna go to admin.html uh, right here. And it's gonna ask me for the storage account name and the SAS token. The storage account name is Blobcaster right here, uh, which I can just grab out of this URL and paste in. And then the SAS token is what I have here. So I'm going to grab that and paste it in here to this little application. I'm gonna tell it to remember this. And it's now logged in, although there's nothing here on the screen. So first thing I wanna do is edit some metadata about my uh, podcast here, my podcast, um, HTTP colon slash slash one .com or something like that. It's using the ENUS uh, dialect and English, and I can say copyright, and you get the picture here. Now, with this, I can fill out all these fields and then save these. These actually get saved to the container as metadata. To show you what that actually looks like, the API under the hood went over to the metadata for the actual container and saved that data. So I can come back over here and look at my containers again, and then pull up this one, and then look at the actual metadata on this container and we'll see those properties that I just saved right here inside of my metadata. And the similar effect is gonna happen whenever I create a podcast, which I can do right here by creating a new episode. So I'm gonna choose a file here and I have one over here in my downloads folder. I can use this one right here and I'm gonna say my first episode and I'm gonna give it my first episode for the uh, description as well. And that's fine for a date. And then I can click add episode and it's going to upload this little episode to my storage account. 
So what it's really doing is behind the scenes, just uploading this to blob storage from my local desk here, desktop here. And once that's up there, I can click OK. And then I can see the episode here. I can uh, change the name of it uh, from you know, my episode uh, 123. And this will update the metadata here on the blob or I can delete it or I can download it right here from the blob storage account as well. So any of those options I can do with this particular uh, little interface that I wrote with this. And so now that I have some data here um, my, in my met pod podcast metadata, I've got an episode up there. I should be able to view my XML right here. And this is what I would want to submit to any of the podcast syndicators such as iTunes or into something like Spotify or another uh, a sol solution like that that will allow you to integrate your podcast with their uh, apps as well. So it would be searchable and discoverable in those uh, different platforms. So with that, this is a way to host a podcast on Azure Blob Storage. But before we get offline here, I do wanna show you what the actual metadata looks like on my files that I just uploaded. So if I come back over here to my containers and go back into web, I now have this episodes uh, directory right here. And I also have this RSS XML that was generated by my application. So the application actually generated this XML and wrote it to Blob Storage. And then it also put in this little MP3 file here for my episode storage right here on Blob Storage. And so with that, I can look at this and then pull up the metadata to show you all of the various things that I have uh, on this particular episode that I entered when I actually typed those into my little application. So this uh, the application is interacting with the SDK, which is then calling some APIs on Azure that allow me to upload the file, then populate this metadata. And once that's done, I can then use all the metadata along with uh, the metadata that I have associated with the podcast, then to generate this RSS feed that will be submitted to all of my different podcast syndications out there. So again, this is just a very simple app that allows me to host a podcast on Blob Storage but it's a very effective way to do it. And I'm glad I was able to do this because I'm gonna be launching a podcast in the, in the coming weeks talking about Azure, not so much about how to's and demos, but more about news and commentary on things going on in the Microsoft space related to Microsoft Azure. So you'll be want to subscribe to that as well. So until next time, thanks for watching this episode of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you. Thank you.